Another common configuration for DACs is that of the weighted current DAC or IDAC. <clears throat> and it basically uses uh, or can be built using the same principle as the R2R ladder uh, DAC network that we previously saw, but instead of using a reference voltage um, and just switching it uh, based on the, the different bits of the digital input word, we're going to use a reference current. Um, and current sources are easily implementable in ICs. And so basically what you use is a, a reference current. Uh, the different bits are going to uh, control different switches, which I haven't represented here, but you can see that the value of the current sources I have uh, included in each branch are dependent on that reference switch. So that could be represented as a current source um, where the current gets switched into that branch uh, if the bit is equal to one, or it gets uh, the switch gets open if the particular bit is equal to zero. And so what we end up with uh, is also an output current, I out, uh, which is going to be, if let's imagine all the bits are equal to one, it's going to be the sum of all those uh, currents. Each one of those currents represents one LSB, um, one step LSB in current. Um, and if uh, some of those bits are set to zero, then those currents for those particular branches will switch off. Uh, when all the bits are equal to zero, then the current will be equal to zero. Uh, the uh, equivalent circuit, if we compute the Norton equivalent circuit for this circuit, can be represented as a current source in parallel with a resistor of value R, uh, where the value of that uh, input current is equal to 2 times I, I being the reference current, uh, times B1, 2 to the negative 1, plus B2 to the negative 2, plus dot 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 Bn, 2 to the negative n. So notice a similar weighting approach uh, to what we had with the R to R ladder in the case of the voltage-based DAC. Now, one of the advantage uh, of this type of circuits, uh, the advantage of um, current DACs or IDACs in general, is that they're easy to implement with transistors. The current sources are easily implementable. They also, you will see, uh, have higher speeds than their equivalent uh, voltage DAC counterparts. But one of the limitations is that because they output uh, a current, if what we're interested in is an output analog voltage, then we have that extra step of having to run that current through a transconductance amplifier uh, to turn it into an output voltage. So here we have uh, a possible implementation of an IDAC. Uh, notice that in this case, we have generated our reference current, IREF, which is up here, uh, by simply using a, a reference voltage VREF. In the practice, uh, if you were to design this, especially in an integrated circuit, you typically will uh, generate a ref um, or the different reference currents uh, via just current sources because they're easily implementable. But for the sake of example, it does the job. So I have my VREF voltage, which generates an, uh, an IREF current. And then notice that that IREF is fed into an R2R network of resistors. Um, and every time it reaches one junction, it splits into two. Uh, or gets divided by half. So after the first junction, I have I1 flowing through the 2R resistor and I flowing through the R resistor. After the second junction, I have I2 and I2, I3 and I3, I4 and I4. Um, if my reference voltage, as I've indicated down here, if my reference voltage is equal to uh, 10 volts, then my reference current will be uh, VREF over R, so it will be uh, 10 volts divided by, and I've made my R's 10 Ks, so it will be, my reference current will be 1 milliamp. In that case, after the first uh, uh, junction there, after the first node, it will get split into two I1s, with I1 being equal to half of IREF. After the second junction, after reaching that second node, it will get split into two again. So if you split uh, 0.5 into two, you will have 0.25 flowing through the second 2R resistor and 0.25 flowing uh, through through the R resistor towards the third node over there. And then I will get the same R3 uh, or 0.125 milliamps to each one of the branches and R I4 or 0 0.0625 milliamps to each one of those branches. Um, the LSB, one LSB, will be the smallest one of those currents, which is uh, 0 0.0625 milliamps. And then I have my digital input, which is comprised of 
Uh, in this case, I have a four bit system. So my digital input was comprised of four bits, B1, B2, B3, and B4, which basically control those switches. And so they are going to um, uh, switch the current, the particular current for that particular branch in or out uh, of the circuit. If they are in the zero position, then the switch will be connected to ground. If they are in the one position or if the bit is equal to one, then they'll be connected um, to the input of the transconductance amplifier. This thing down here is a transconductance amplifier or a current to voltage converter. And so uh, the output current I out that gets fed to my transconductance amplifier again is going to be equal to um, the reference current multiplied by some weight um, for the different branches, for the different bits. Uh, the largest weight will be for the most significant uh, bit, B1, and the smallest weight for the least significant bit, B4. Uh, and they will all get added and fed into the transconductance amplifier and uh, the output voltage will be proportional to it. Um, specifically, the output voltage out of the transconductance amplifier, V out, is going to be equal. We can see the output current flowing through the RF resistor. Uh, since my voltage at the inverting input terminal of the amplifier is sitting at the virtual ground, then my voltage at the output node of the amplifier, transconductance amplifier, is going to be uh, negative RF times I out. And again, I out is just uh, the sum of the different currents I1, I2, I3, I4, which we can see here, they're equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, etc. They're basically equal to um, I ref divided by 2 or times 2 to the minus 1, I ref divided by 4 or times 2 to the negative 2, I ref times 2 to the minus 3 and I ref times 2 to the minus 4. And so I can express my output voltage, or rather I'm, I'm going to express first my output current I out as I ref uh, times B1 times 2 to the minus 1 plus B2 times 2 to the minus 2 Plus, and if I wanted to do it for this particular example, I will just go all the way to B4 times 2 to the minus 4. If I want to do it in general, it will go all the way to Bn times 2 to the minus n. Uh, again, the different weights uh, for the different lines, and then the bit just indicates whether the current is being uh, switched in or not. If, if it is not, then that particular uh, term is multiplied times 0 and is essentially eliminated. So I can rewrite my output voltage then as negative RF times I ref times B1 2 to the minus 1 plus B2 2 to the minus 2 plus dot 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 Bn 2 to the minus n. So that will be the value of my output voltage in this uh, particular case. Notice my full scale uh, voltage occurs. Again, with that expression into parentheses is equal to 1. And so my, my uh, VFS will be equal to um, I ref times RF. And notice that in this case my output is a negative uh, voltage, so I'm going to express this as absolute value for my full scale. Uh, and that will be assuming that uh, I reach all the way to my my output or my um, expression into parentheses is equal to 1. And that will only occur when n is equal to infinity. And so, generally speaking, my maximum output voltage, V out max, again, is going to be equal to, uh, in absolute terms, VFS minus 1 LSB. And my 1 LSB... It's going to be equal to uh, VFS divided by 2 to the n. Or in this particular case, I ref times RF divided by 2 to the n or times 2 to the negative n. So that will be the value of my um, LSB for this system. Thank you.